Hello and welcome to Witten Station, or which really should be called Witten and Heathfield Station, because one side of the tracks is Witten and the other side is Heathfield. Once upon a time they were both Witten and long, long ago were both in Hounslow Heath. And welcome to Hounslow Heath, at least what remains of it. It's in a different borough from Witten and Heathfield, but together they tell the same story of a king's ill-fated attempt to change history. Isleworth Common was once in Isleworth Parish. It's now the Hounslow Heath Nature Reserve in the London Borough of Hounslow. Twickenham Common was in Witten in Twickenham Parish, but is now Heathfield in the London Borough of Richmond-upon-Thames. Both parishes have been separated throughout history by a track, which is now Hamworth Road, and the whole was divided from the rest of Hounslow Heath by the River Crane. This is the extent of the encampment site, which began in the time of King John and Magna Carta, when this expanse of Hounslow Heath became an important meeting place, halfway between the royal powerhouses of London and Windsor. And to the English Civil War, when Oliver Cromwell encamped here with his new model army of 20,000 men before marching on London. And to King James II, who conceived the idea of a military training ground long before Salisbury Plain, who invented the Royal Military Tattoo, and who borrowed the idea of a Royal Military Hospital from his late brother, King Charles II. Long after James fell out of favour with his subjects, the army continued to be trained and reviewed here according to the constant threat of invasion by the French. Isleworth Common continued to be used by the military well into the 20th century, whereas rural Witten had disappeared by 1940. In the 1950s, the new parish of St Augustine was created together with a new political ward of Heathfield, which effectively sliced Witten in half. To confuse matters even further, proposed boundary changes look to retain Heathfield in the parliamentary constituency of Twickenham, whilst Witten moves into Isleworth and Brentford to include Hounslow Heath. It's fair to say that Witten struggles to know its place. King James II took to the throne in February 1685, following the death of his brother, King Charles II. Wasting no time, by the summer of that same year, James put into action his long-held ambitions to reform the British army and to return the country to Catholicism. Here we see him wearing the uniform of general officer as head of the largest standing army ever assembled by a monarch on British soil in peacetime. Within this portrait is a glimpse of that army set out on Hounslow Heath in 1685. The serried rows of tents, the training and display arena, flanked by the River Crane for over three miles. But this was only the start, with James looking to establish a permanent base in the form of a citadel close to London. But there were problems. Enclosure restrictions on Hounslow Heath from the time of Henry VIII meant that even though he was king, James wasn't able to immediately build where he chose, and so looked to a friend and ally, Baron John Bellassis. A royalist officer and member of parliament, distinguished during and after the Civil War, Bellassis spent a long time in prison because of his Catholic leanings, although never brought to trial. He occupied the former estate of Sir John Suckling in Witten before building a new mansion close by. Part of the lands James rented included Witten Warren, which had been established in Tudor times for the breeding of fur and meat. The rest covered seven fields in Isleworth Parish alongside the Staines Road and opposite the entrance to the heath. For the encampment of 1686, James was ahead of the game with regard to advertising and publicity. Programmes were hawked on the streets of London to attract spectators to come and see the first ever royal tournament showing the new army in training and in action. Following in the footsteps of those spectators today, we might arrive in more comfort off the train from Waterloo to Whitton Station. Turning south, Percy Road was then a Heathland track, following for about a quarter of a mile or so the 72-acre Whitton Town Field, uh, to about the site of Whitton Methodist Church today. Where Ross Road joins Percy Road was the start of the 22-acre Whitton Warren, but with some striking new additions on the landscape, starting with a huge barn built for the use of the army encamped on Hounslow Heath. It measured 150 feet long and comprised three granaries, one for oats, one for hay and one for straw. Further along, past Twickenham Academy, was another new building, 
this time a state-of-the-art bakehouse built on an industrial scale to provide daily bread for the army. It measured 40 foot wide and 70 feet long and had five ovens used every day by 14 men to bake 6,000 loaves of bread. Between the bakehouse and Witten Corner Social Care Centre stood Witten's windmill. Known as a post or hollow post mill, it was one of the earliest types of European windmill. It appears on Moses Glover's map of 1635 and probably originated from the Netherlands where they were used to drain boggy marshland. On the opposite side of the highway, and now the site of Twickenham Cemetery, was another striking addition to the landscape in the form of a stable block. This represented a significant change in attitude towards animal welfare from that of tying horses to a rope outdoors in all weathers. Another significant change in attitude came about at the junction of Hospital Bridge Road with the A316, this time with regard to human welfare and a purpose-built hospital for sick and wounded soldiers, at a time when only naval personnel received bespoke medical care. Built on three floors, it measured 120 feet long and boasted 90 beds in six wards. Viewed from the A316 towards London today, the Chertsey arterial slices right through the site of the building. This plan of the hospital, recently discovered at the Victoria and Albert Museum, confirms the building faced north and that it sat on the lower warren with the river crane to the rear. The height of the upper warren is just visible sloping downwards towards the river behind the building, much as the land does to this day. The drawing is part of a collection of papers belonging to Sir Christopher Wren and confirms the hospital and I quote, formed part of the permanent buildings of the military camp on Hounslow Heath, Middlesex. This not only puts Wren's involvement as the King Surveyor of Works beyond the purely administrative, but also confirms James's plan to build a citadel here close to London. The hospital, being the largest and most impressive building on the immediate landscape, would have provided an unprecedented view across the entire three-mile encampment site stretching out across the heath towards the Old Stange Road. Today is a landscape of two halves either side of Hanworth Road, dividing Whitton and Heathfield to what remains of Hounslow Heath, awash with trees and scrub, no longer sufficiently barren to accommodate the acres of tents, stables, kitchens, workshops and traders' stalls of three centuries ago. Entering the camp from the direction of Hampton and Teddington, the river was crossed by Whitton Bridge, some 300 yards upstream from the present hospital bridge. The exact site of which lies in today's Crane Park, somewhere to the rear of Woodland Crescent, where a line of senior officers' tents began forming the backdrop to the encampment along the line of Element Avenue. Next came the rows of captains and other NCO tents, following the line of Sheringham Avenue, where a line of kitchens divided the soldiers' tents from about Lyndhurst Avenue. Waverley Avenue is roughly where the encampment ended, with the quartermasters' and sergeants' tents facing the display arena about the line of Powder Mill Lane, facing a more tranquil Heathfield recreation ground. Hanworth Road marks the division of the two old parishes and where the Isleworth side is still recovering from the worst upheaval in its long history. Felton Marshalling Yard was built at the end of the First World War using German prisoners of war labour. The 32 miles of track and sidings covered 79 acres of previously agricultural land between Felton and Hounslow. Three centuries previously, the noise and smoke of steam trains was replaced by forges set very close to the elegant tent of Master General Lord Dartmouth. Before him sat a secure enclosure containing 28 cannon and ammunition hauled from the Tower of London and fenced in with armed wagons, each gun having a gunner, two warders and a party of foot soldiers. Today, half that same enclosure hums and rattles to the sound of intelligent letter sorting machines, processing more than 36,000 letters and parcels per hour at one of the UK's 66 Royal Mail sorting centres. Beyond that, the heath is recovering from the brutalisation of the railway years and looking much more familiar to the occupants of the tents continuing uninterrupted towards Baber Bridge on the Staines Road, representing a river crossing here for millennia. Beside the bridge in 1635, Moses Glover shows a large gravel pit before the access point to the heath from the Staines Road, which survives much the same today as the former entrance to Hounslow Heath Golf Club, where directly opposite in 1686, 
was the king's quarters, providing the monarch with sumptuous accommodation alongside his closest court, set in an enclosure of trees extending along the roadside as far as Baber Bridge. This prospect shows a mock gatehouse flanked by twin towers and the king's movable tabernacle or chapel on wheels, where James celebrated his highly controversial Catholic Mass. A far cry from the same location today. A mile and a half away across the heath to Hamworth Road stood the Queen's Scaffold, or Royal Viewing Platform, from where Her Majesty and guests could enjoy the display in comfort surrounded by crowds of spectators, and where today a utility shed occupies much the same spot, overlooking a very different prospect. The whole point of this vast undertaking was for the King to display the finest and best equipped fighting force in Europe going through its paces both in display and in action. Buda was the ancient capital of Hungary under the Ottoman Empire that was eventually taken in 1686 by a 100,000 strong Holy League army, a victory embraced by James as one of extolling papal power. So much so he looked to recreate the event on Hounslow Heath the following year and commissioned Dutch artist Willem van der Velt to record it. A larger viewing platform sits dead centre of the heath looking towards Staines Road. Before it, troops emerge from trenches representing a long war of attrition before the final attack. Beyond this line, we can just make out a deep moat cut out of the heath to represent the River Danube. The spoil from the trenches and the ditch were used to construct Buddha Hill, upon which sat the Turkish stronghold, seen here under attack from a big line of guns. Several 18th century maps repeat a feature named Buddha Hills, a mile away in Feltham which has been taken as the site of the reenactment. However, the location away from the encampment site and across two rivers makes this highly unlikely, especially with evidence of an otherwise unexplained earthwork on the encampment site matching the drawings of William Vandervelde, including a deep ditch 20 feet wide running parallel with Staines Road, which continues heathside encircling an impressive mound. This satellite view shows construction work currently underway to the mound in much the same way as Stuart Army pioneers toiled to create this ambitious earthwork for their king over the three centuries ago. King James II's fourth and final encampment on Hounslow Heath took place in the summer of 1688, an auspicious year for a monarch who failed to impress the people as much did his military displays. As Whitton's windmill continued to turn on the horizon, so did the king's fortunes in the form of a Protestant son-in-law close to assembling an army with which to invade England and take its crown. And which came to pass in November 1688, when Prince William of Orange landed at Torbay in Devon to begin the Glorious Revolution. Despite building the greatest regular army the country had ever known, James was powerless to resist. Deserted by friends and allies, he went into self-exile and the Stuart monarchy was at an end. Very soon, all trace of King James's ambitions laid out on Hounslow Heath was gone, except for a single reference to his hospital that attaches a road and a bridge and all manner of speculations as to its origin. The part of the heath that was in Twickenham Parish continued to be used by the military as a training and review ground until 1740. It encompassed an area from what is today Warren Road in Witten, 
as far as Hospital Bridge Road in Heathfield, where a row of permanent shops and stores had grown up to service the troops and spectators, effectively the very first retail outlet centre in West Middlesex, including a coffee shop. Hanworth Road as we know it today came about after the 19th century enclosure awards. These provided legal proof of historical ownership and the boundaries of land holdings, therefore giving the green light to the development of Hounslow Heath. Thanks to the army, what remains today of Isleworth Common survives as the Hounslow Heath Nature Reserve, whereas half the remainder in Heathfield has only recently made way for a new score. Witten has only the White Hart public house as witness to the days of encampments when inns and alehouses such as this were expected to billet troops free with their board and lodgings met by a treasury promise that was never honoured. In 1935 a rare tribute was paid to King James II's contribution to the building of the modern British army with a staged reconstruction of the 1686 encampment on Hounslow Heath as part of the Aldershot military tattoo. Otherwise, all else connected to this story lies hidden within a bigger history, buried beneath the roads and houses of a suburb that spawned another suburb on former Heathland, either side of the railway track where this exploration began. So there we have it. An otherwise seemingly mundane place, actually stuffed full of history. From a Royal Military Hospital, designed by Sir Christopher Wren, the site of the largest standing army on British soil in peacetime and the home of the Royal Military Tattoo and an earthwork to the glorious revolution that should itself be listed as an ancient monument. All this and much more in a place I thought I knew. <laughs>